so dear friend i welcome all of you for this live workshop it is my honor pleasure and privilege communicating with all the esteemed colleague and friends today we are going to discuss about how gut bacteria affect our health before that i am going to conduct a poll let's have a poll so first poll how many bacteria reside in our gut it's 1 billion it's a 10 trillion or 100 trillion okay so i'm launching a poll kindly participate in the poll how many bacteria reside in our gut 1 billion 10 trillion or 100 trillion kindly participate in the poll if you participate you're going to take a lot of golden nugget today so participate in the poll all all the participant so i'm ending the poll i'm sharing the result so 33% said 10 trillion and 67% 100 trillion so most of them are right so today's topic is how the bacteria which reside in our gut affect our overall health and i welcome all of you and thank you so much for joining today's session you might be doing so many things but you chose to come here and i welcome you and thank you so much for being here uh, just to share certain a certain instruction how notepad and pen ready because i'm going to share a lot of golden nugget at the end of workshop you may forget so many things but if you find something which is useful you can implement write it down in your notepad and pen if you have any urgent things and you want to leave you can discontinue right now because i am going to discuss the whole aspect about how our microbiota affect our health so you should stay till end so that you can get so much so many uh, life changing principle from today's session and i am conducting these sessions and thousands of people has transformed their life so just be here Uh, let me introduce myself i am dr sunil sabre i am basically a pediatric neurologist but i am also a wellness coach stress management consultant and international number one best seller author and i am on a mission to inspire 2 million people about stress chronic disorder like obesity diabetes heart disease cancer and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life okay and for that i am conducting this live session since many months uh, i did my mbbs graduation from bj medical college sachin general hospital pune i did my md from st jesus medical college and came hospital mumbai i did fellowship in pediatric neurology and uh, and currently practicing as a pediatric neurologist at ahmednagar and i'm also wellness coach and stress management consultant helping people manage their stress reverse their chronic disorder and achieve holistic health i have published a book uh, oh stress give me a big uh, break which has become amazon number one be international best seller and many people has benefited after reading this book recently i published a book 17 powerful secret to manage stress during corona pandemic because we all know this corona has affected each and every individual on this earth how millions of people has affected millions of people have died so many people have lost their job so it has called lot of physical psychological and professional hazard to all the people on the earth so the time is very stressful how to navigate this challenging time i have discussed this principle and mind you today's session will help you to navigate this challenging time because i think the corona infection it's cytokine storm it's immune mediated damage is related to our gut microbiota though they are not uh, studies but i think because of the microbiota it changes in the microbiota or dysbiosis may be predisposing 
certain people having cytokine storm and certain people being protected from it and how to enhance and make our microbiota healthy so that we can fight this corona and i think the solution might be lying in this microbiota to deal with this corona pandemic and we are going to subsequently discuss these things so i'm conducting this workshop under global holistic health initiative because you know that i'm on a mission to inspire 2 million people about holistic health and i'm conducting this kind of workshop previously i conducted workshop on mindful meditation then healthy diet then stress management how to navigate through this corona pandemic and how to increase your health and health span and life span so i have conducted many workshop and this is today's workshop is with continuum of that global holistic health initiative so dear friends what is the today's learning objective we are going to discuss about what is microbiome how it is acquired what is the role of this microbiota in the human health how it is changed how it is altered and what are the diseases caused because of this alteration of this microbiota and how to improve this microbiota so that we can achieve optimum health so dear friend we all know that the incidence of chronic disorders like obesity diabetes heart disease cancers and psychological mental disorders are increasing exponentially all over the world and this chronic disorder kill almost 40 million people worldwide and 4.8 million people in india okay to treat this disorder the world will require 47 trillion dollars and india will require 4.5 trillion dollars so it's going to be a costly affair treating this disorder so the better approach would be prevention of this disorder how to prevent this disorder and why this disorder are increasing so in the research is found that this disorder are increasing because of increase in the stress urbanization changing in lifestyle sedentary lifestyle unhealthy diet high caloric intake lack of exercise smoking tobacco use alcohol abuse toxin in environment and pollution so it all affects our health it also affect our microbiota and it in turn affect our overall health so the hippocrates has been quoted as saying that the death sits in our bowel and bad digestion is the root cause of all evil in 400 bc so the importance of gut has been recognized uh, almost uh, 2000 3000 year ago now the human body is inhabited by vast number of bacteria fungi virus archaea and these organisms reside in our body in a symbiotic manner there's a they are residing there in a peaceful manner and help we are helping each other we are helping this microbiota this microbiota is helping us and we are living in a symbiotic manner and these organisms are present ubiquitously in the environment as well and in our body also so you can find them on the skin you can find them in our genetic urinary tract we can find it on a gastrointestinal tract and respiratory tract so it is inhabited this back microbiota is inhabited in each and every part of our body out of all this our gut contain maximum number of microbiota and out of whole gut the colon contain 70% of the human microbiota okay so this bacteria viruses they are the they are there since billions of years on this earth before the human being has been originated and they are still there and they are co evolving with us so we are co co evolving with this microbiome so you can see in this figure the microbiota may be present in your hair in the nostril in skin vagina in gi tract oral cavity esophagus stomach and colon so ubiquitously it is present all over the body now this our gut harbor 100 trillion microbiota now our body contain 10 trillion cells 
and our gut contain 100 trillion microbiota means the number is 10 time more than the cells the human body contain so they are 10 time more and they influence our physiology they influence our metabolism they helps in the nutrition they help in the immune function so they are very they affect all the functions of the human body like our human body is like a factory okay the kidney is filtering the blood throwing the urine out the gut is digesting the food making the nutrient available to the body the heart is pumping the blood to the whole body so every part is working and this microbiota is like a worker in this factory helping to run this factory smoothly now there are thousands of species of this bacteria and if you take the genome of all this bacteria this genome is 100 fold as compared to the human genome so can you imagine the human has 23000 gene human genome and this microbiome has 3 million genes okay so they are 100 they have more genes than the human body okay so these genes code lot of proteins lot of metabolites which help in lot of human functions like i told you nutrition immune function so many things to run our body in a coordinated manner this microbiota and the proteins and the metabolites which are synthesized by this uh, microbiota helps and if there is a disruption of this microbiota then it lead to lot of diseases like obesity chronic inflammatory disorders like ulcerative colitis crohn disease heart disease uh, depression so many disorders which we are going to see subsequently and this gut microbiota is different as it depends upon the person's age it depends upon the person's health it depends upon the location of microbiota in the gut it depends upon the person's diet his lifestyle so depending upon this various changes there is large interindividual microbiota diversity but in a particular individual there is a core microbial population and it remains stable it may change depending upon various factor which we are going to see but there is a core microbiota population in a particular individual but there would be interindividual diversity and i'm i'm going to launch a second poll there's some yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm i'm launching a second poll now when our gut microbiota is maximally colonized by my, uh, when our gut is maximally colonized by microbiota is it in utero is it at the time of delivery of the baby or during the childhood i am launching the poll when our gut is maximally colonized by microbiota in utero at the time of delivery of the baby or during the childhood right kindly participate in the poll when our gut is maximally colonized by microbiota kindly participate in the poll is it in utero or at the time of delivery of the baby or during childhood i am ending the poll i am sharing the result 
so 33% says in utero and 67% says during childhood and nobody says at the time of delivery actually the maximum microbiota we we acquire is during the time of the delivery So we'll see how the microbiota is acquired. So where does this microbiota come from? When the baby is in utero, the baby's gut contain very minimal or no microbiome. But when during the time of delivery, the baby maximally acquired this microbiota. So maximal microbiota is acquired when the baby come out from the birth canal because the mother's birth canal has a lot of organism so the baby's body is all covered by this microbiota the fluid containing microbiota the baby swallow the vaginal fluid then it go goes into its gastrointestinal tract and this microbiota get established in the baby's gut okay so the maximum microbiota is acquired during the time of delivery so the composition of the person's microbiota depends upon the mode of delivery the baby's feeding type the baby's diet antibiotic use stress and lifestyle okay so it is found that those baby who are delivered vaginally has totally different microbiota as compared to the baby who is delivered by the cesarean section for example the baby who is delivered by Uh, uh, vaginally consists of lactobacillus and bifidobacter while the baby which is delivered by cesarean section has a lot of strepto streptococcus and staphylococcus so the mode of delivery determine what would be the microbiota of the baby and it would be the base on this microbiota the other microbiota will accumulate in the baby's gut so this is the base and it's very important that's why mode of delivery is extremely important for the establishment of microbiota the second thing comes with a feeding type okay so it is found that those baby who is breastfed has a completely different microbiota as compared to the baby who's fed on formula feed or cow's milk or other milk so feeding also determine what microbiota that particular person will have then comes the complementary food uh, food uh, establishment at the age of 6 month around 6 month and the type of food the baby consumes also determine what kind of microbiota the per that baby will have then next comes the diet so the diet will determine again the proliferation of microbiota so it is found that those people who eat plant based vegetarian diet has completely different microbiota as compared to the person who eat lot of processed food lot of sugar lot of animal protein lot of high fructose corn syrup so diet also determine which kind of microbiota that person will have so the microbiota which the baby acquire at the time of birth is the base on which the other microbiota comes for example if there is a land and few people go in that particular virgin land they establish their home they start doing their field okay then what they will do they will bring their friends and relative in that particular location then their friend will bring their friend and relative this kind of way that particular location would be habit habit uh, established by various people so people will bring their close relative or friends so similarly the microbiota which is established at the time of birth determine what microbiota the baby will have okay and it also determined by the type of feeding the type of food and the type of lifestyle we have and it is found that by the age of 2 to 3 years the baby's microbiota has same as compared to the adult microbiota 
So you can see how the microbiota differ. If the baby is born vaginally, if the baby is breastfed, if baby is giving, given a lot of food which contain fibers, then it has a completely different microbiota as compared to the baby who is delivered by cesarean section giving top feed, which uh, the, the, then later on consume a lot of animal proteins and diet, diet which is deficient in fiber. They have a completely different type of microbiota. So it depends upon these so many things. So you take the example of building. The base of the building determine the stability of the building and subsequent uh, construction. The base is important. So the base of microbiota occur during the time of delivery and the baby, the way the baby is fed. So I'm launching the third bowl. So where in the gut microbiota are maximum in number? Is it stomach, small intestine and colon? Where in the gut the microbiota are maximum in number? Kindly participate in the poll. Which part of the gut, the microbiota is maximum in number? Kindly participate in the poll, let it be interactive. So I'm ending the poll. I'm sharing the result. So, 38% said small intestine and 63% said colon. So maximum are right. So dear friends, till this time, are everybody is with me? Write in the chat box. Is it too heavy or everybody is understanding? Write in the chat box. Thank you, Chow Su, for the feedback. Write in the chat box. Till now, everybody are, is with me. Write in the chat box. Yes, not heavy, it's interesting. Great, thank you so much. Chao Su for feedback. Thank you, Pratap Rahulji. Yes, no problem. Yes, with you. Thank you so much for the feedback. So we'll get back to the. So the look, the number of the microbiota and their type depends upon the location. Okay, so. The stomach will have a lactobacillus, duodenum will have enterococci lactobacilli, and the colon will have so many of microbiota. Okay, and the number will depend upon its location. So it would be rare in esophagus, uncommon in stomach. There would be moderate in quantity in jejunum, but there would be 
maximum quantity would be in a colon 10 raised to 10 to 10 raised to 12 and they are primarily anaerobic so colon contain maximum number of microbiota now what are the role of this microbiota in the human health now this microbiota help in lot of functions of the human functions first is a immunity it helps in our boosting our immunity it helps in the digestion and the absorption of nutrients it helps in the our functioning of the brain okay so it has a lot of function so first is they help in nutrition and metabolism this microbiota synthesize vitamins amino acids like vitamin b vitamin k which is not synthesized by human they break down the carbohydrates like fibers and they synthesize what is called a short chain fatty acid now this short chain fatty acid is very essential for the human health this short chain fatty acids acts as a energy source for the human being they are the energy source for the colonocyte the colon cell they kill the cancer cell they prevent the gut microbiota dispose, uh, dysbiosis means they prevent the abnormality in the gut ecosystem they have a very important role in central appetite regulation so how much we should eat it depends upon the signal sent by this microbiota and these signals are sent with the help of lot of metabolites which is called as metabolomic which is uh, secreted by this uh, microbiota this microbiota also help in reducing the insulin resistance so that the obesity is prevented the type 2 diabetes also prevented it controls the growth hormones also means it synthesizes lot of uh, neurotransmitter which control our brain function like serotonin is maximally synthesized in gut so depression uh, the deficiency of serotonin is a cause of depression so the depression is now caused it is uh, postulated that it is caused because of the changes in the our gut microbiota so this microbiota helps in our nutrition and metabolism second function is immunity now 70% of our immunity is governed by gut now we all know the importance of immunity because of the corona pandemic those who have weak immunity they are more prone for severe disease and death or those who have strong immunity are protected from the corona or they get a mild disease now 70% of the immunity is governed by the gut and this is governed by the gut microbiota so that's why i'm telling you the if you want to uh, remain healthy you want to fight this corona pandemic you have to have a strong gut you have to have a strong microbiota then you're going to have you can fight with this corona pandemic and so many people so many doctors and so many scientists has completely given a blind eye to this microbiota and i think the solution of fighting this uh, corona pandemic lies in our gut so our gut is lined by a lot of immune apparatus they have a pears patches they have a lymphoid follicle they have mesenteric lymph nodes so there are so many uh, immune apparatus which is there in our gut now this microbiota acts as a gatekeeper and trainer okay so what how they act as gatekeeper they form a tight junction they are so thickly populated that they will not, not allow the pathogenic bacteria in the gut okay so they act as a gatekeeper and they do not allow the pathogenic bacteria to enter and the second function is a trainer now what happens in the it is in the research it is found that those mice who doesn't have the microbiota in the gut it is called a germ free mite they found that this germ free mite their uh, immune apparatus is become atrophic and their immunity is extremely weak okay and when they their gut is given the external microbiota their immunity becomes stronger means our immunity depends upon the microbiota so how it helps this microbiota is a kind of a antigenic stimulus to our immunity for example if you have a enemy then you your country will have a strong army so that you can deal with this enemy okay so this microbiota 
acts like a external organism for which our immunity becomes strong but the immunity comes to know that this microbiota is helpful so that this immunity do not act on this microbiota so they live in a symbiotic way but this microbiota and the gut they live in a distance there is a physical barrier between this microbiota and the human epithelial cell and human epi uh, uh, immune apparatus and it is by mucus the mucus separate the human microbiota and our immunity so they live in a symbiotic manner the immunity says you stay here i will not kill you but you help us in various function like nutrition metabolism and other things so they are physically separate though our microbiota is in gut but they are physically separated by mucus and they lives harmoniously so that this gives stimulus to this that our immunity remains strong and this immunity in turn this immunity becomes so mature that it helps to differentiate which is our friend and which is a foe which is our own protein and which is our foreign protein that's why our immunity do not attack our own cell so this way this microbiota helps in our immunity now when this microbiota is disturbed so what happens then this immunity become berserk it goes on killing its own cell and that's why there is so much of autoimmune disorder this is because change in this microbiota okay so this microbiota is extremely helpful in our immunity next function is it helps in gi structure and function it helps the establishment of blood supply peristalsis bile acid metabolism and nutrition absorption and also help in the uh, repair of the epithelial cell of the gut the next function of this microbiota is on drug now you know that a drug particular drug may have a good effect on one person and it may cause adverse effect on other person so how it what how it is uh, how does it happen so it depends upon person genes as well as the microbiota okay so the microbiota will metabolize these drugs and it will determine which metabolic are formed so it will determine the efficacy of the drugs as well as its adverse effect so efficacy and adverse effect of the is determined by the kind of microbiota which we have in our gut okay also we come across lot of uh toxic substances because of pollution because of lot of food being red with the pesticide and fertilizer this microbiota help to reduce the toxicity of this lot of toxins which we consume so microbiota help in eliminating lot of adverse effect of drugs as well as the toxicity the next is a cns function now there is a connection between the gut and brain so you all might be aware of the fact that when we are stressed when we are under tension there is a there is a kind of a tightness in the gut our gut moment will be altered we will feel some abnormal sensation in our gut why does it happen because there is a connection of cns our brain with our gut it is said that the gut contain more neuron than our spinal cord it is like a second brain okay so the brain has a effect on our gut second thing the gut microbiota with their lot of proteins and metabolite affect the brain function it also synthesize a lot of neurotransmitter like serotonin that's why the decrease in serotonin causes depression and the serotonin is synthesized by gut so depression anxiety lot of mood disorder are because of the change in the gut microbiota okay so there is a lot of connection between the brain and gut and they affect each other this microbiota again has effect on a, our heart so they found that the germ free mice the mice which doesn't have a gut microbiota their heart size is very small their cardiac output is uh, is reduced okay so there is a dysfunction of the heart in the mice who do not have the gut microbiota second thing the gut microbiota 
also metabolize the animal protein. For example, the L-carnitine, which is present in the meat, red meat, it is converted by gut microbiota into a protein called as TAMO, called trimethylene oxide, and it causes this cholesterol accumulation, foam cell formation in coronary arteries, platelet hyperresponsiveness, vascular endothelial inflammation, fibrosis and remodeling, and leading to atherosclerosis and uh, heart attack. So the heart is also affected by our gut microbiota, okay? So all the things in our body is affected by this microbiota. So I will be launching again next poll. So what are the functions of microbiota? Okay, digestion of the food, immunity, prevention of infection, synthesis of vitamin or all of the above. I'm launching the poll, kindly participate in the poll. What are the functions of microbiota? It's a digestion of food, immunity, prevention of infection or synthesis of vitamin. Kindly participate in the poll. What are the functions of microbiota? Digestion of food, immunity, prevention of infection, synthesis of vitamin, all, all of the above. So I'm ending the poll. I'm sharing the result. So maximum number 90% says all of the above. Yes. So it helps in digestion of food. It helps in making our immunity, boost our immunity, prevent infection, synthesis of vitamin. Now, write in the chat box now, clear. Write in the chat box, all of her with me. Write in the chat box. Everything clear till this time. The functions of microbiota, the microbiota help in our nutrition, digestion, immunity, our brain function, our heart function, the structural integrity of the gut, the prevention of infection, write in the chat box clear so that we can go ahead and we'll discuss how the changes of this microbiota affect our immunity, our uh, whole body and lead to various diseases. Write in the chat box clear. Thank you so much. Ciao Su for the feedback. Write in the chat box. Thank you, Dr. Rashin Ji for the feedback. Thank you, Pratap Rauji for the feedback. Thank you, Surya Kanji for the feedback. Thank you, Dr. Nitaji, for the feedback. So now we'll go ahead with the next thing. Now, how this microbiota is affected? Now, we have an ecosystem in our gut, and when it is affected, when there is a reduced number of bacteria, good bacteria, and there is a reduced decrease in the diversity of this bacteria, it is called as dysbiosis, and it leads to various diseases. And what are the factors which affect this gut microbiota? The first and foremost is the antibiotic. Now we all know the antibiotic is the number one invention. It's an important invention in a uh, uh, in a scientific era. It has saved saved millions of lives, but it is a double-edged sword. If the antibiotic is not used properly, rationally, then it will cause more harm. And that is happening nowadays. Because of antibiotic overuse, 
there is change in the human microbiota because the antibiotic will not kill not only the pathogenic bacteria but the antibiotic will kill the normal bacteria the microbiota in our gut as well as in our body and what will happen it is found that the course of 5 to 7 days of antibiotic will reduce your gut microbiota by 1/3 so it will reduce by 33 to 40% huge huge number and what will happen now this pathogenic bacteria are very smart they will find a kind of a mechanism to develop a resistance against the antibiotic they will form a coat around themselves so that the antibiotic doesn't penetrate they will alter their enzyme and they will transport and transfer their enzyme to their other pathogenic pathogenic bacteria so that the pathogenic bacteria will develop resistance but the good bacteria will not have this kind of mechanism so there will be selective increase in the pathogenic bacteria in the gut and there would be decrease in the good bacteria so it will have a imbalance in our gut so it is found that this antibiotic causes decrease in the diversity of the gut microbiota uh, uh, the diversity of microbiome in our gut and it predispose the person to various allergies various autoimmune disorders like ulcerative colitis crohn disease and so many now disorders has been implicated because of uh, irrational use of antibiotic now the irrationality is twofold the doctor and parents what happens the parents want their child to get cured of the infection very fast they want a quick result they don't want to wait okay they do not want to take the disease its course so they have a pressure on doctor to treat the patients very fast and also doctor is also afraid that if something should not happen so they will give antibiotic so that any complication doesn't happen so that's why there is a increased use of antibiotic but mind you this antibiotic is causing havoc to our microbiota and new research is emerging that this use of antibiotic is responsible for increasing incidence of asthma eczema allergy autoimmune disorder autism and so many obesity diabetes now you might be aware of the fact that the animal industry okay the the animals are given antibiotic why to increase the weight okay so it is found that the maximum amount of antibiotic consumed on this earth is in the animal industry they give the antibiotic injection to the animal not only protect them from the infection but it is found that if the farmer give antibiotic to the uh, their uh, uh, animals their weight increase so it is a very simple and logical thing that the antibiotic causes weight gain that's why there is so much of obesity there's so much of diabetes and other things which is now implicated because of this antibiotic now in this corona pandemic which we have seen in india there is increased incidence of mucor mycosis now nobody knows why it is occurring but i'm going to tell you certain things it is because of the change in the microbiota in our nose in our sinuses and all because the sinuses are inhabited by good bacteria viruses fungi mucor they are there in each and every person but because of corona the patients are given antibiotic so there is a change in the microbiota means all the bacteria are killed okay and the fungus are not killed okay so fungus will have upper hand on top of it we are giving steroid we are reducing immunity steroid also increases the uh, incidence of fungi also because of corona their nasal tract is damaged so these are multifactorial things and that's why there is a increased incidence of mucor mycosis because of all this factor antibiotic steroid corona itself and so many things so the cause is change in the microbiota ecosystem in the sinus second thing is microbial infection so if we consume contaminated water the pathogenic bacteria viruses enter then they will establish and they will throw away the normal microbiota so this is also a cause of decrease in the diversity and number of good bacteria in our gut third is diet in the research it is found that the diet which is highly processed 
low fiber, which contain a lot of artificial sweetener and food additive. They has a bad effect on our gut because this highly processed industrialized food contain a lot of chemicals, a lot of coloring agent, a lot of toxins, a lot of sugar, which causes the deprivation of the good bacteria and they support the growth of bad bacteria which survive on sugar which survive on this high fat food and that's why there is a selective me metabolism of this food and this leads to obesity diabetes so the cause of obesity and diabetes is also now implicated because of the change in the microbiota in our gut because in the research it is found that the microbiota of the obese patient is completely different than the microbiota of the lean person okay and they have found that these obese people the, their diet is a deficient in the fiber that's why they have a selective uh, they selectively cause and enhance the growth of the particular pathogenic bacteria which extract a lot of calories from the food and a lot of lipids and they deposit this lipid in our body leading to obesity and diabetes. So the diet is also responsible for the kind of bacteria we'll, which we'll have and the kind of disease we'll have. The next disruptor is anti-acid drug. Now we all know everybody has consumed this anti-acid drugs but this anti-acid drugs is also bad for the human microbiota uh, especially if this anti-acid drugs are consumed for a prolonged period of time. So we keep on consuming like for acidity we consume H2 blocker then proton pump inhibitor but if you consume it will change your gut microbiota because it will decrease the pH of your stomach. Now, the acidity of stomach is protective. It prevents the entry of pathogenic bacteria. Okay. So, if you change the pH of gut, it will allow the entry of pathogenic bacteria and it will throw away the normal bacteria. So, anti-acid, prolonged use of anti-acid drugs also lead to dysbiosis. Next thing is a steroid. So, if the person is given steroid for a prolonged period of time, it will change the person's microbiota it will cause selective increase in the growth of yeast cell that's why those persons are given steroid their immunity is decreased the chance of fungal infection is quite high oral contraceptive also also disturb this oral mic uh, uh, gut microbiota now the non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and all other things uh, diclofenac, acyclofenac, we all use as a painkiller, but they, they do not directly affect the microbiota, but they affect the gut. They causes a micro ulcers in the gut and they make the gut atmosphere inhospitable for this human microbiota. Stress. Now stress is also implicated for change in the microbiota. Because of the chronic stress, a lot of hormones like epinephrine, norepinephrine, catecholamines are secreted, our blood supply to the gut decreases, a lot of free radicals are increased, so it causes damage to the gut, make the gut inhospitable for the good microbiota. The stress is also implicated as a disruptor of the gut microbiota. The excess chlorine which we use in our water, okay, so the water which is supplied by municipal corporation, they make the water chlorinated so that the pathogenic bacteria viruses are killed, but it has other side effect. It also consumed by us and it kills the good bacteria as well. Also the people who are undergoing radiation and chemotherapy, their gut microbiota also get disturbed. The pesticide fertilizers, which are used in the field also lead, they enter in our food chain. They, we, are consu uh, we consume these things and they alter our gut micro microbiota. So, dear friend, we all know that nature has its ecosystem. Okay. So, you know that this earth, the ecosystem, there are a lot of plants, there are a lot of animals, there are a lot of bacteria, fungi, 
human being birds animals they are living in a symbiotic manner and if there is a kind of a symbiotic relationship then this gut will remain healthy this uh, earth will remain healthy so if uh, this symbiotic ecosystem is disturbed then it will cause lot of problem similarly this microbiota in our gut is like a ecosystem and if this ecosystem is in a balance then we are in healthy situation if this balance is disturbed then it would lead to diseases okay so now we can take the example that our trees are like a microbiota on the earth okay so we are destroying these trees so there are so many of pollution so much of air pollution water pollution we are just destroying the earth and because of that there would be disturbed ecosystem and global warming the temperature of our earth is increasing and the consequences are there would be the melting of the iceberg then there would be flood so we all are witnessing the kind of nature's fury there is a flood in china there is flood in europe there is flood in india okay so this is because of the change we are destroying the plants we are destroying the nature this ecosystem is destroyed and it has its own side effects so there would be a lot of flood there would be drought there would be lot of cyclones so if the ecosystem is in balance everybody is living happily but because of this disturbed ecosystem because of this pollution change in the ecosystem the human are destroyed or we are getting lot of diseases because of this change in the uh, human uh, ecosystem on the earth so similarly the way our gut has the ecosystem and when it is disturbed then it lead to lot of diseases and it is called as dysbiosis the decrease in the number and diversity of this gut microbiota is called as di uh, dysbiosis and it lead to lot of diseases like inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis and crohn disease irritable bowel syndrome celiac disease psoriasis type 1 diabetes atopic eczema allergy asthma obesity type 2 diabetes atherosclerosis colorectal cancer gallstones autism bacterial translocation and disease small intestinal bacterial overgrowth called as sibo fibromyalgia pancreatitis so there are so many disorders now there are so many research going on <clears throat> all over the world and now the scientific community is said that the change in this microbiota may be contributing factor for this so many disorders because of the change in the diversity of the gut there is a syndrome called as leaky gut syndrome i have told you the microbiota has a tight junction and they prevent the entry of the bacteria they prevent the entry of unnecessary protein in our body but when their number is decreased their diversity is reduced the unwanted bacteria will get entry in the body unwanted protein will get entry in your body and this unwanted protein the humanity will have a human reaction on this protein and it is the cause of this allergy and autoimmune disorder okay so this leaky gut syndrome because of the dysbiosis is cause of all this autoimmune disorder and an allergy so what is the evidence what is the evidence that this change in the gut microbiota cause disease so there are so many research and there are thousands of paper on this so the the most important thing which help to establish the importance of gut microbiota is by germ free mice means the mice who doesn't have the microbiota in the gut so the scientists did a experiment they transplanted the gut the uh, gut free, uh, the germ free uh, mice gut with the uh, the microbiota from the human um, uh, person human obese per, uh, male or female so they took the stool sample of a obese human they separated the microbiota and that they transplanted means to the some uh, tube they put that microbiota in the germ free gut and they, what they found 
this mice become obese okay then they did an experiment that they transplanted the microbiota from a person who is a thin slim and fit they found that this mice remained thin and fit now they transplanted the microbiota from the obese mice to the slim mice and the slim mice become obese and vice versa so they transplanted the microbiota from the thin mice to the obese mice the obese mice become thin so it is found that the phenotype can be changed by transplanting the microbiota so it indicate that this obesity this diabetes is also governed by this human microbiota also they did a experiment they transplanted the microbiota from the autistic child to the germ free mice and this germ free mice become autistic so the phenotype can be transferred from one person to other person by changing the microbiota so there are so many evidence that this gut microbiota is responsible for so many disorders so i am launching a poll next poll so what is the single most important factor to improve the gut gut microbiota is it eating a lots of sugar or eating fiber rich diet what is the most important factor to improve the gut microbiota is it eating lot of sugar or eating fiber rich diet kindly participate in the poll i am ending the poll sharing the result so 100% says eating fiber rich diet absolutely so how to manipulate the gut microbiota how to enhance the growth of good bacteria in your gut okay so we will see how to do it the first and foremost thing is avoidance of disruptor we have seen what are the disruptor what are the things which destroy this human microbiota if you avoid then it will help to increase the number of good bacteria first is rational and minimal use of antibiotic okay so if you are doctor you should prescribe it rationally if you are parents discuss with doctor whether the antibiotic is absolutely necessary should i wait i am ready to wait tell me any dangerous sign so that i come can come back to you and you can start the antibiotic okay so you have a good discussion with the doctor so the, whether the antibiotic is essential we can wait for a few days and we can start if we develop a certain symptoms so have a healthy discussion between patient and doctor and we can minimal we can have a minimal use of antibiotic second thing is avoiding diet which is highly processed which is low fiber which can be a lot of artificial sweetener and food additive minimal use of anti acid okay we should have a tolerance okay what a slightest pain a slightest acidity we consume pop up the pill just avoid this kind of attitude just develop a tolerance so minimal use of anti uh, anti acid drug minimal use of steroid minimal use of oral, oral contraceptive pill minimal use of i uh, painkiller like uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs and avoid the pesticide and other chemical which is sprayed on food by consuming organic food second thing is living naturally means the normal delivery should be promoted now there is a research all over the world the incidence of cesarean section has increased exponentially okay cesarean section is extremely important to save when the baby is in distress mother is in distress there is clinical indication but because of lot of fear the parent force the doctor to uh, do a cesarean section so try to have a normal delivery because we have seen that the base of the microbiota is established when the baby passes through the birth canal the baby who is born vaginally has 
a completely different microbiota as compared to the baby who is delivered cesarean section. And there is a research. Those baby who has delivered by uh, vaginally, who has breastfed, has very less chance of allergy, asthma, autoimmune disorder as compared to the baby who is delivered by cesarean section and who has top fed. And in the research, it is found that it would be startling that the lifespan of a per the baby who is delivered by cesarean section and given a top fit is 20% less than the baby who is delivered by vaginally and giving breastfeeding. Can you imagine 20% difference in the lifespan, just the way the baby is delivered. So have just try to have a normal delivery, give baby exclusively breastfeeding for six months and then add, add a complementary feed at the end of six months and continue breastfeeding till two years and avoid formula feeding. Eat plant-based vegan diet, which is a fiber rich. Go to the nature, do gardening, do work in a soil. Okay, daag achche lagte hai. Okay, dirt is also good. What happens because of so much of this obsession for the sanitization, for the cleanliness, it is also having a bad effect. Okay, though it has reduced the incidence of cholera and other diarrhea and all, but it is also increased the incidence of allergy, asthma, autoimmune disorder, and it is called as hygiene hypothesis. We have become so much of hygienic that we are not coming in contact with the pathogen and our immunity is developing in another way. There is a immunity called as Th1, which deal with the bacteria viruses and Th2, which deal with the autopsy, allergy and asthma. So those who are living in a very sanitized way, very cleanly way, develop TH2 type of immunity and it predisposes that person to this allergy, asthma. It is called as hygiene hypothesis. So go to the nature, allow the children to play in the garden, let them get dirty in the soil. Okay, it is good, it is not bad. Daag achche lagte hai. Keep the window open, let the nature the fresh air come in our home, it brings a microbiome with itself. Minimal use of antiseptic and sanitizer. Now, because of corona pandemic, we have to use sanitizer, but in home, try to use less and less sanitizer. When you go outside, you can use the sanitizer, but at home, don't use so much of sanitizer. We are using so many chemicals. If you clean the floor, you are using sanitizer. So it is destroying all the microorganism, which is actually good for our health. And scientists are saying because of this or obsession to the sanitization and cleanliness is causing all these autoimmune and allergic disorders. Again, minimal use of antibacterial soap, shampoo and cosmetic. Now there is a lot of fat. Now there is an antibacterial soap, there are antibacterial clothes, antibacterial garments, antibacterial paints. I don't know how, who is telling these people means we have become obsessed with the bacteria that bacteria is a bad has caused the development of so much of antibacterial thing that it will destroy the good bacteria rather than killing the bad bacteria and it, it will lead to the development of antibiotic resistance okay so avoid uh, use minimally these things so that our gut microbiota is remained uh, properly now first strategy is to avoid the substances which decreases this microbiota. The next strategy is eating the food which enhances the growth of this microbiota. And this is called as prebiotic. So the prebiotic are the food component or ingredient which is not digestible by the human body, but it specifically and selectively nourishes the beneficial colonic microbiota. And these are usually fiber. So remember, if you want to increase the number and the diversity of your gut microbiota, if you want to achieve holistic health, then eat food which is rich in fiber. Okay, so one thing if you have to take from this live workshop that you have to eat food which is rich in fiber. So let's see what are the food which is rich in fiber. So consume a lot of green leafy vegetable. Okay, so now, what happens? This vegetable are not so tasty. Okay, they are not so fancy. They are not advertised on the television. No uh, actor or uh, 
brand ambassador will advertise for cauliflower or broccoli okay so they are very unromantic and all things but the magic and the uh, the ingredient of the health lies in this green leafy vegetable okay so there is a rule of 1 2 3 have a one serving of vegetable in your breakfast two serving your lunch and three serving in your dinner okay so if you have follow this rule of 1 2 3 then you will be completely away from lot of disease like obesity diabetes heart disease cancer depression and all so start eating lot of green leafy vegetable now you know you have lot of vegetable now i have change your mindset always think that i want to increase the number of good bacteria in my gut and that's why i'm going to eat it and mind you when i read about this microbiota i'm doing this since many years the attitude toward the vegetable has completely changed initially i, I used to hate eating this untasty sometimes sour vegetable but when my mindset changed that this will enhance my good gut microbiota then i started eating lot of green leafy vegetable eat lot of seasonal fruits eat lot of roots there are so many roots now there is a lot of sweet potatoes there so many roots are available like carrots then there is a so many things which is available in the market which we can come consume and we can increase the growth of our good bacteria then eat lot of millets okay so millets also contain lot of fibers which help the num increase the number of microbiota garlic garlic is the fantastic fantastic prebiot uh, prebiotic which will enhance the growth of microbiota onion eat lot of onion banana especially the green banana it, it contain lot of prebiotic barley then oats apple then this suran which is called as suran in india konjac root flax seed now flax seed is a fantastic make a powder of it and just spray on your breakfast and your food and it will completely uh, change the taste of your food and it will have a lot of anti cancer property antioxidant property it protects you against diabetes obesity and it will enhance the growth of your gut microbiota wheat bran what happens the way we we are eating the wheat is completely bad we are removing the covering of the wheat which contain fibers and which we are eating a powder which is increasing our sugar to the roof okay so wheat bran cabbage legumes consume lot of legumes it contains lot of fibers which will enhance the growth of microbiota custard apple watermelon grapefruits oranges almonds pista pistachio nuts so these are the things which contain lot of prebiotic things which will enhance your microbiota so what should we eat we should eat food not too much but mostly plant just not down these things eat food not too much mostly plant if you eat plant based vegan diet then the obesity diabetes heart disease will be unknown to you okay so eat whole unprocessed food because in processing you are removing this fiber colorful fruits vegetable salads sprouted beans cereal pulses brown rice eat complex carbohydrate but no simple sugar protein try to avoid animal protein eat maximum vegetable protein fat avoid refined vegetable oil trans fat dalda eat fat which is naturally present in food and eat food which is grown on a healthy soil like organic food which food one should avoid we should avoid caffeinated sugar to drink junk food sweet fried food dalda ice cream polished rice maida margarine avoid industrialized packaged food because they remove fibers and nutrient from them there are lot of chemicals coloring agent preservative it is extremely bad for your health and it is packaged in the plastic okay so to add a fuel to the fire it will completely destroy your microbiota avoid sugar in any form now second 
a strategy to enhance the population of good bacteria is by giving probiotic. Now, what is a probiotic? So the probiotic are the live bacteria or yeast when administered in an adequate amount in a viable quantity in a, in a proper formulation, it will give benefit to the human health. Okay. So there has been a lot of study done on this probiotic and its effect on the human health. The no commonly we use those probiotic with antibiotic to prevent antibiotic associated diarrhea. But there are a lot of study being done on this probiotic and their use in many diseases. But mind you, you have to take the probiotic with a pinch of salt because the probiotic will be there as a temporary thing. Okay. It is found in the research that if you eat probiotic, it will remain in your gut for a temporary period of time and it will go away. Because I told you the core microbiota in your gut remains same and it allow the selective establishment of the bacteria which can live symbiotically with the already the bacteria which is present in your gut. So the science is in a developing state of probiotic. So till that time when the science is properly established for the use of probiotic, how much is the quantity, which is the bacteria which is useful because what happens? The reductionist approach will not help. Industry will take that lactobacillus is good. This is bad. No, nothing is good. Nothing is bad. The proportion, the relativity, the way they are living in a body determine what is good, what is bad. So if you take out lactobacillus and give, it will not help because the gut ecosystem determine which bacteria should be established. Okay. So Till that time, you should eat a lot of food which contain probiotic at home. So you, you can eat a lot of yogurts or dahi, pickle, which contain probiotic, kanji, which can be uh, prepared with the help of uh, beetroot, idli dosa, which is a fermented food. So this food contain a lot of homemade probiotic. You can use it instead of consuming commercially available probiotic don't use commercially available probiotic because science is in a developing state so dear friends because of this probiotic now there is a new system of science which is developing like a precision medicine or personalized nutrition because they found that the particular microbiota if now the scientists are taking the sample of stool they are analyzing what are the microbiota is present then they are analyzing that person's health his food pattern his blood sugar level what are the diseases they having and with the help of artificial intelligence they are having algorithm that if this person has this kind of microbiota then this person has chance of developing this disorder and he should eat this so with the mapping of this human microbiota we can able to develop a personalized nutrition because certain person if they eat a lot of sugar they will not develop diabetes okay and certain people who will eat very minimal sugar they will eat very natural food still they have a lot of sugar so it is determined by this microbiota its diversity the kind of microbiota they have so depending upon the microbiota, now the scientist will be able to tell you that you should eat this food, you should eat at this time. So there would be personalized nutrition, which is on our way. Next thing is fecal microbiota transplant. Now, new, now we have seen that there is a bone marrow transplant, there is a kidney transplant, there is a liver transplant. Now the new kid on the horizon is a fecal microbiota transplant. So what they are doing, they are taking the microbiota from the healthy person and they're transplanting it to the diseased person to replenish the GI microbiota. Now it has given a phenomenal result. The most important disease which has completely changed the treatment paradigm is Clostridium difficile associated infection which is uh, which occur because of antibiotic associated diarrhea and it is very severe it has a lot of 
mortality and the antibiotic which is used to treat this diarrhea the efficacy is only 30% but the efficacy of fecal microbiota transplant is 92% can you imagine they take out the microbiota from the healthy person through the colonoscope they put that microbiota in the colon of the patient and they become normal within hours within few days few become normal within hours and few become normal within 2 to 3 days maximum within 5 days efficacy is 92% and the efficacy of the medicine is only 30% so it is now commonly used for clostridium difficile infection now it has been also used in inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis and crohn disease in the ulcerative colitis they have found the efficacy up to the tune of 40% but in crohn disease there is less efficacy so they are figuring out because the science is in a infancy they are figuring out how to give what to give it what quantity how frequently one setting other setting they are figuring it out but there is also useful in ulcerative colitis now there are lot of study being done for this fecal microbiota transplant on obesity diabetes autism multiple sclerosis so lot of autoimmune disorder there is no treatment the treatment also whatever medicinal treatment are there it is a biological or immunosuppression drug they do not treat the proper disease it suppresses the disease it is very costly it has a lot of side effect also but now this fecal microbiota transplant is used in obesity diabetes lot of autoimmune disorder like multiple sclerosis ulcerative colitis crohn disease and autism also so there is one group in usa which is doing study on autism and they found that if you take out the microbiota from the healthy and they uh, given this microbiota to the autistic child and then they supplemented with the freeze dried capsule which contain microbiota their autism symptoms improved by 40 to 50% okay so this trial is going on and it is showing a, a incredible result so last but not the least i have told you the microbiota is also decreased by stress so management of stress by doing physical exercise 30 minutes physical exercise every day 5 days per week having adequate uninterrupted 7 and 1/2 hour to 8 hour of sleep doing yoga pranayam meditation having optimistic outlook toward life and living a happy life will go all long way to increase our microbiota so friends to summarize the gut microbiota is highly essential for the human health decrease in the gut microbiota diversity is associated with various diseases it's called as dysbiosis key to optimum health is eating plant based fiber rich microbiota promoting diet and avoiding microbiota disruptor eating food containing pre probiotic is also helpful for our health and employing a lot of stress management technique will make us completely healthy dear friend thank you so much for being here in this live workshop so i thank all of you from bottom of my heart for being here with me and listening carefully now this session is open for question and answer so write in the chat box how did you find this session whether you understood write in the chat box now this session is open for question and answer thank you surya kant ji thank you so much sir write in the chat box i now write a question and answer and i am going to share about my community after five uh, within a five minutes thank you krishnan ji very informative thank you dr pp paul nice information thank you so much thank you so much for the feedback i hope you have got lot of golden nuggets from today's session i hope you will implement this principle by eating plant based fiber rich diet avoiding the disruptor of the microbiota and protecting your microbiota as well as the our health, our earth because protecting the gut microbiota 
is directly proportional to protecting the earth for example if you eat plant based diet and if you consume less animal protein you you might be aware of the fact that the maximum contributor for the global warming is consumption of animal food animal food consume lot of energy and it emit lot of greenhouse gases so if you start eating plant based diet reduce the animal food you will protect earth if you eat lot of organic food less fertilizers less of insecticide you will protect earth you will protect yourself okay so if you protect your ecosystem outside you your ecosystem inside your gut will be protected and we will be healthy and our earth will be also healthy thank you chef uh, shafiur ji very informative excellent way of explanation can transform in a day to day life thank you so much will remember in our practice as well thank you so much uh, dr rashin kar sir so this session is open for question and answer write the question in the chat box or question and answer section write in the questions in the chat box and dear friends i am going to sh uh, sh uh, share a link in the comment box uh write what things you have learned from today's section, uh, session how it transform your life and how you going to practice it okay so i'm going to share in the chat box and just go and click this link if you like this session give me a five star and write how it has helped you to transform your life write in this link i have given the link i'm going to take question and answer and again share my community and my initiative and how you can join join in this initiative till that time i will request all of you i've given a link yes i will uh, share the recorded video also i'll share the recorded video also so i've given the link in the chat box click the link if you like this give me a five star and give your review what you have taken up from this today's session i i'm going to taken till that time i'm uh taking this question dr das has asked how are antibiotics supposed to increase weight in animal is it same for any random antibiotic now i have told you the antibiotic causes the disruption of our human gut by one third and i have told you the human gut microbiota the normal human mi gut microbiota help in nutrition absorption of nutrition so the good gut microbiota absorb the nutrition and also helps in the appetite control and they will absorb the nutrient which is helpful for the body and they will not absorb the nutrient which is not helpful for the body and they will also send signal to the brain for satiety now if you give the antibiotic it will change the diversity the type of microbiota in the gut and it would be established by the other bacteria which will extract lot of nutrients from the food it will extract the lipid and which will deposit this lipid in a blood which will consequently deposit it in adipocyte so this has been found in research that those children who have received antibiotic their gut microbiota is completely different than the people who has not received antibiotic and this anti this gut microbiota the type of gut microbiota consumed uh, by the people uh, the uh, by the, uh, the antibiotic consuming people promote obesity by consuming lot of energy from the food extracting lot of energy from food and depositing the lipids so this way they causes the uh, hey shouldn't forget the microbiota of skin yes absolutely right i have told you that all body is covered by the microbiota is 
special skin okay and they are removing, removing symbiotically if we are using lot of sanitizer we are using lot of sanitizer it is destroying the good microbiota of our and we are using lot of antibacterial soap so we are destroying the microbiota on our body we are uh, having a lot of cosmetic a uh, talc powder cream it is destroying the our gut microbiota so stop using lot of cosmetic use non bacterial soap for your cleaning don't use too much of sanitizer antibacterial thing yes during corona pandemic it is now advisable to use sanitizer but when you go outside use sanitizer but when you are home try to use minimum of the uh, antiseptic soap use non bacteria bactericidal soap less cosmetic less cleaner we use lot of phenyl and all to clean the fl floor use it minimally okay do not completely stop but use it minimally use minimal chemicals okay then it will help to protect the microbiota great great information session five star thank you so much yeah if microbiota is disturbed by long time of antibiotic intake then can it be made normal by following good plant food probiotic now the good thing uh, the bad thing is that when you consume antibiotic your one third microbiota is gone but the good thing is that you can replenish your good microbiota by consuming food which contain prebiotic which contain lot of fibers which enhance the growth of good bacteria now see there are so many bacteria like a human being they will have their preference for food okay the way the human has a preference for food some like pizza burger some like green leafy vegetable some like south indian so similarly the gut microbiota has their own preference some like this food some like that food so if you enhance selectively enhance the growth of good bacteria by giving fiber if you give a lot of fiber the good bacteria which consume this fiber their growth will be enhanced so if you give it lot of uh, food which contain fiber which will enhance the growth of good bacteria so your answer to your question is yes you can replenish the microbiota uh, uh, the gut microbiota by consuming a lot of food which contain fiber but it may take few days it may take some months and sometime years as well in the research it is found it is not my opinion it may takes days weeks month or years also so don't underestimate the destruction caused by antibiotic thank you so much for information thank you krishnan ji thank you so much for your feedback i request all my dear colleague just click the link give me a five star rating and what you have learned how did it helped you thank you so much thank you sir thank you so much for the feedback so i'm just now sharing about my community uh, i am also the founder of health and happiness community the code of honor my of my community is holistic health the member of my community try to achieve holistic health in each and every sphere of life in a personal life social life professional life spiritual life they not only achieve uh, holistic health but they guide their family members and friends to achieve the same second principle is is they live the life mindful with the mindfulness and awareness living in a present moment accepting the life as it is in a non judgmental way forgetting about past not worrying about the future they try to change the thing they can change and accept the things they cannot change the third is environmental protection the member pledge to protect the environment by saving the water maintaining the cleanliness and avoiding the pollution of environment in water way way possible leadership change start with me the member try not to change other person but change themselves and set an example they are the torch bearer to the society the next principle is kaizen they strive for continuous daily improvement 
they learn they implement and then they teach so they are competition with themselves not with other person and they try to become better person today as compared to the yesterday and they believe in taking action the next principle is contribution to the society the member try to contribute in whatever pay, way possible to the society it may be money knowledge time and skill so why i started this community five years back my health was in a bad shape i was completely stressed out burned out i had put on 10 kg of weight i started looking much older than my chronological age then i stopped i introspected i was in a rat race then i read th hundreds and thousands of book on spirituality on holistic health on personal development i formulated certain principle i implemented it and it completely transformed my life i lost 10 kg of weight my work efficiency improved my relationship with my parents spouse my colleague improved and then i started sharing this principle to other people so i am on a mission to educate and inspire 2 million people about stress chronic disorder and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life so i am conducting lot of live workshop webinar seminars on stress management healthy living healthy diet mindful meditation how to increase life span health span so this is a initiative which i am doing since many years initially i used to do a physical workshop now after pandemic i am doing this virtual workshop and thousands of people has been benefited by this so i am conducting i have conducted for various doctor community like indian academy of pediatrics indian medical association for various government organization on radio for various parent like thalassemic parent so i am i have published this book o stress give me a break which has become international number one best seller recently i published a book 17 powerful secret to banish stress during corona pandemic so my journey was like this and i fall in this valley then i stop introspected read a lot of books formulated certain principle and i come out of this valley so i want to share this wisdom which i have acquired to the my journey to help other people to navigate this valley so that their duration of this valley is less or i can act as a bridge so that they should not fall in this valley that's why i'm conducting a lot of this live workshop so friends if you are stressed out if you have any chronic disorder like obesity diabetes hypertension heart disease cancer or mental health disease want to reverse them if you do not want this disorder to enter in your life at first place if anybody in the family has this disorder if you want to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life then join my community okay so be a part of this workshop every week and it will help to completely transform your life thank you so much i will give my email so that you can contact me if you have any questions and want this is my email so you can note it down if you have any things you can send your questions query and be part of this community be there in this live workshop next workshop would be on sleep because sleep is extremely essential for human health so what is the importance of sleep what are the diseases associated with disturbed sleep and how we can have a good sleep so as to lead healthy life would be discussed in the next workshop so join me in the next workshop be in touch this is my email